Creating a project in Unreal Engine is a rather simple task. We will click some buttons, wait a few seconds, and your project will be created on your drive. There is a lot of magic that is going to happen behind the curtain, however, and it can be a little unnerving to some people, especially in regards to saving, moving, and copying. So let's get that conceptual problem out of the way first. Generally speaking, when we create things in a typical program, the act of saving simply creates and stores all the data in a single file. The same is true for virtually every content creation tool from Photoshop to Word to Maya. Unreal Engine works a little bit differently. It is best to think of Unreal Engine as a toolkit and projects as a network of files. It also creates and saves many types of files, for example, levels, assets, and materials. It also aggregates content from a multitude of sources. Sounds, textures, images, and many other things can be brought into the project. As you can imagine, this would make quite a mess if not managed. So, to keep it all contained, Unreal Engine has a mandatory project structure. While working in the editor, Unreal Engine will maintain virtually everything for you. However, understanding this will certainly help as you experience the engine further. Okay, so let's begin by creating our project and review what I just said and how it applies to what we create. In our launcher, click on the launch button to open up the game engine. Give it a moment to launch. Now this window shares our project list from the launcher before it. And you can launch your projects from here as well. To create a new project, let's instead click on the new project tab. This pane allows us to decide some of the fundamentals for our game. For example, we can choose a Blueprint-based project, a C++-based project. For this course, we want to create a Blueprint-based project. This will allow us to build and deploy our project without the need for Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and pop into the Blueprint tab for now. In this window, we will be presented with a list of project templates. These templates, although not complete games, are very useful in giving you a start on some of the more complex types of games. We have a first-person template, vehicle template, side-scroller templates, and many more. For the purposes of this exercise, let's go ahead and choose the third-person template. Now, below the templates, we can further define our project. I will leave my target hardware, quality, and content as their defaults. We can always adjust these options later in the project settings if needed, so don't worry about making the wrong decision here. So now, let's go ahead and select where our project will be saved. I'll put mine on the desktop in a folder called First Hour Project. Once the folder is selected, I'll name my project First Hour Project and hit the Create Project button. After a short delay, you should be presented with the main window. Before we get into how to navigate this interface, I want to draw your attention to the panel all the way at the bottom of your screen. This is your project's content directory. If you delve into it, you will see there are many files of different types. Right-clicking on the file will reveal a plethora of options. Let's select Show in Explorer. Notice that it opened Windows Explorer in a directory within your project's folder. As you can see, our project is not a singular file, but instead is a network of files and folders. This is important for two reasons. The first is that if you want to move your project to another place, you will need to move the entire structure. Secondly, Notice that when we work on our project that there will not just be one file that is saved. Instead, we will be saving many files as we add and edit our assets in Unreal. The project structure is fundamental to understanding and growing with Unreal. And after working with Unreal for a while, this will make a lot more sense. Okay, so now that we have our project created, let's go ahead and begin to explore the way to manage some of the basics of the UE interface. Since we already started in the Content Browser, let's review some of its features. As you may expect, the Content Browser has a very capable and robust search and filter tool. These will become more and more valuable as your project grows. If you click the Show or Hide Sources panel button here on the left, you will see that you can get an Explorer-style view, making it somewhat easier and more comfortable to locate and manage files. In the right panel, we have our Content Browser with Preview. This is where most of your content management will occur. You can rename, move, or edit your files from here. Lastly, on the bottom right, there is a View Options menu. Selecting it can give you hidden access to things like the engine content, while also allowing you to customize the way your content browser looks. 
Note that anything you bring into your project will be brought in through the content browser by using the import functionality. We will get to that more as we progress, but this content browser contains all the models, textures, and other assets your project will ingest. You can easily bring assets from the content browser into your level by simply dragging and dropping. Moving up to the Modes tab, we will find a series of assets we can place in our levels. Lights, generic geometry, fog, post-process effects, and more can all be found here in the Modes tab. The Modes panel also contains the level editing tools. Within, you can find vertex painting, landscape tools, foliage painting, and even some very simple modeling tools. Progressing into the main window, we get to our editor viewport. The viewport shows your open level. We can add assets to our level from our content browser or the modes panel by simply dragging and dropping. To navigate in the viewport, simply right click and drag to rotate the camera. Left click and drag to move forward and backward. And finally, you can use the middle mouse button to pan around the scene. If you have a mouse wheel, you can also move forward and backwards with it. Alternatively, you can use the WASD style movement by holding left click and using W, A, S, and D keys to move forward, left, back, and right respectively. This is generally how I navigate my levels. The speed of movement can be adjusted from the camera icon here in the top right. The higher the number, the faster we move. Moving or transforming the orientation of objects in our scene is also relatively easy. After selecting an object, click the Move, Rotate, or Scale tools found in the top of the window to manipulate the object or use the spacebar to cycle through them. Alternatively, you can use Maya-like hotkeys W to move, E to rotate, and R to scale. Now, you may have noticed that as you transform your objects, you are snapping to a grid. Sometimes this can be very, very helpful. Sometimes, not so much. Just to the right of the transform tools, you can adjust these snap settings for each of the tools independently. You can also enable and disable snapping altogether by simply clicking on their snap icons. Snapping is enabled when it is highlighted in orange. There are far too many hotkeys to list them all, but I'd like to mention some that I find useful and use all the time. In order to turn off all widgets and see the game in a preview-like view, use the G key to toggle game mode. Using Control plus a number will allow you to bookmark your viewport. Then you can press the same number to snap back to your camera. We call this bookmarking. Using F11 will toggle you in and out of immersive mode. And finally, F will focus on any selected object. Mastering these hotkeys is definitely advisable, but the actions can of course be found in the menus as well. Leaving the viewport and taking a look further right, we come across our World Outliner tab. This tab shows a complete list of everything that is populated in your level. This tab will become increasingly important as your levels grow in size. You can use this panel to quickly locate and edit asset instances in your level. Note that you can also quickly find things using context-sensitive search found at the top of the pane. Moving down, we have our Detail tab, directly below our World Outliner. The contents of this tab will change based on the items selected in the level and will allow you to edit the parameters of the objects in your scene. Selecting a light, for example, will display the light's parameters for editing. Selecting a post-process volume gives you options relative to post-processing effects and so on. As you can see, it gives us a quick and easy way to adjust any items in our level. Coming back to the center top, we have our toolbar. On the left is a convenient Save Current button, allowing you to save your level with one click. The toolbar also gives quick access to your world and project settings. You will certainly need to know where they are located as your skill grows, so I'd suggest making a mental note of their location. Additionally, your level blueprint, cinematics, build tools, and playtest tools are also found up here. Be sure to recognize that any of the buttons on this tab with an arrow on the right can fly out to show more options. Lastly, we have our typical pull-down menu options across the top. File, Edit, Window, and Help. 
In the file menu, you will find the ability to create or open new levels, save content, and also provides access to the deployment tools. For now, I'd like you to pay special attention to the Save All item. In the beginning, I would suggest you use this whenever you make significant changes. It will ensure anything you have open is saved related to your project. Moving over to the Edit menu reveals typical copy-paste tools, as well as reiterates the level and world settings. Sliding over, the Window menu allows you to open a variety of additional toolboxes you may need. The Help menu gives you quick access to a variety of learning tools available. Before moving to the next tutorial, take some time to familiarize yourself with the UE Editor. Why not check out some of the toolboxes found in the Windows dropdown? Try moving objects around in the level. Try out some of those hotkeys I mentioned. Just poke around and have some fun. Once you feel you are ready for some more, click into the next tutorial.